Is hiking the Appalachian Trail dangerous? That is one of the most common questions I get about the AT. And I have an entire video dedicated to all the different types of dangers that you could run into on the AT. But in this video, I want to talk about what I think the biggest danger of hiking the AT is, which is contracting Lyme disease. And as I say in my other video, I just want to start this off by saying, yes, I think the Appalachian Trail is a very safe place. And I go into all the reasons for that in my other video, which I will link in the show notes. But Lyme disease is a very real concern as you are hiking the Appalachian Trail. Lyme disease can both make you feel terrible in the short term, and also symptoms can persist in the long term after you've been treated for the disease for months or even years, causing a whole host of problems for you. And if you're not familiar, Lyme disease is a tick-borne illness. So basically, you can contract it by getting infected by a deer tick. These are also known as black-legged ticks. And these ticks are like teeny, teeny, tiny. They're really hard to spot if they implant into you. And usually the ones that you catch are the bigger ticks like dog ticks. So you have to be really careful and really pay attention while you're out in the wilderness to make sure that you have not gotten a tick on you. Once a tick has been on your skin for between 24 and 36 hours, it can spread the disease to you. So you wanna catch the tick really quickly and get it off of you. Lyme disease is such a concern on the Appalachian Trail in particular because the high incidence of Lyme disease occurs in the US, basically from Virginia up north to Maine, and then also Minnesota and Wisconsin. Obviously Minnesota and Wisconsin are not problems on the AT, but think about that. That's over half of the AT is in high incidence areas of Lyme disease. And the like biggest hotspot in the US for Lyme disease is the Hudson Valley in New York, and you pass right through there on the AT. Each year, about 30,000 cases of Lyme disease are reported to the CDC. But recent estimates suggest that up to 476,000 people in the US might contract Lyme disease each year. That's insane. That's almost half a million people every single year. And most of those people are in AT states. So let's talk about the signs and symptoms of Lyme disease and how you can avoid it on the AT because you don't want to be those people that get it. I knew several people on the AT who did contract Lyme disease. Luckily, they all caught it and were treated for it, but it is definitely a concern and something that you need to look out for if you're planning to hike the AT or you're doing any other hiking in states where Lyme disease is prevalent. So these signs and symptoms I'm going to share are all from the CDC. So I'm going to put a link down in the show notes so that if you guys want to learn more, you can go take a look at their pages. Early signs and symptoms, which can take place between about three days to 30 days after you've been bitten by the tick, include things like fever, chills, headache, muscle and joint aches, swollen lymph nodes, and of course the famous bullseye rash, which occurs in about 70 to 80% of people who get Lyme disease. If you are lucky enough to get the rash, which I say lucky because this is a clear sign that you probably have Lyme disease, it tends to expand over the course of a few days, getting larger than 12 inches across, and it might feel warm to the touch. Later symptoms, which can occur days or months after the tick bite, can include severe headaches, neck stiffness, facial palsy where one side of your face droops down, arthritis with joint pain and swelling, especially in your knees, pain in your tendons, muscles, and joints, heart palpitations, dizziness, shortness of breath, nerve pain, inflammation of the brain and spinal cord, and shooting pains and numbness and tingling in your feet and hands. You can, get a, you can also get additional rashes on other parts of your body. If you do get Lyme, it's really important that you catch it and treat it early because if you treat it early, and by the way, treatment involves a long course of antibiotics, then it's less likely that you're gonna have long-term symptoms of Lyme. I actually knew a guy in college who, I, I really don't know him anymore, but for a long time he was posting on Facebook his journey with Lyme and he was having all of these terrible chronic symptoms. He was just completely exhausted. He was having a hard time living his life and raising his kids. So it is something that should really be taken seriously. And if you think that you have symptoms of Lyme while you're out on the AT or doing some other hiking or anything like that, it is really important that you go and be tested. And apparently you can get a false negative for a few weeks after you've been bitten by a tick. So if you get a negative and symptoms persist, it might be worth 
going and getting it checked again after some time has passed. And if you have been spending a lot of time out on a trail where Lyme disease is pretty prevalent, then it might be asking your doctor if it's worth doing some preventative treatment. But obviously I'm not a medical professional, so that would be something you wanna discuss with your doctor. I had several friends on the AT who actually got courses of antibiotics from their doctor before they went out on the trail, just in case they started having symptoms of Lyme so that they didn't have to wait days or weeks or whatever in order to go get to a doctor or a medical professional to get tested and actually get the treatment for Lyme disease. So these are all things that you should discuss with your doctor before you go out on the trail. And something to keep in mind is that I looked up the statistics and apparently Lyme tests only have a sensitivity of about 50%. So only about 50% of people with Lyme that go and get tested are actually being diagnosed with Lyme. That means half of all people with Lyme are being misdiagnosed and they're being told they don't have it. I also learned that Lyme disease is the second most common infectious disease in the US and it's six times more common than AIDS or HIV. In 2016, the Appalachian Trail Conservancy surveyed through hikers and found that 5% of respondents said that they had contracted Lyme on the AT. That's crazy. Think about that. That's one in 20 people that you see on the AT have found out that they got Lyme disease on the AT. And those are just the people that know that they got it. Hikers are most likely to get bit by ticks while they're hiking, not staying in shelters. And the states where they're most likely to contract Lyme disease on the AT are Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. The reason for that is you're more likely to contract Lyme disease at lower elevations, and most infections take place between May and July. Apparently, you're less likely to get Lyme disease in Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine because a lot of the AT in those states is higher elevation. And by the way, I know a lot of this sounds scary and I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm just trying to introduce you to a very real threat on the AT. I think that a lot of people are wondering like, oh, am I gonna go out there and get like murdered or get this terrible injury, etc." And I'm not saying that other fears aren't warranted, but generally those things happen way less than people that get Lyme disease. Like Lyme disease is kind of the silent threat on the AT. In that, if I was hiking the AT again, that is what I would worry about is Lyme disease rather than those other things. Because the community on the AT is freaking amazing. People out there really watch out for each other. They help each other out. And while bad things happen because they happen everywhere, like the AT is generally a pretty safe place. But Lyme disease is a pretty real threat. So I think that this one of all the threats is the one that you should pay the most attention to and watch out for. Okay, so let's talk through how to prevent Lyme disease. The number one way that I recommend people avoid Lyme disease is to treat your gear with permethrin. So permethrin is a spray, it's an insect repellent that you can spray on your clothes, your shoes, your gear, and it will repel and kill ticks. So you can actually, even with your clothes, so I would put this on my socks and my pants, for example, and it will actually be effective for up to six weeks and through six washes. After six weeks or six, or six washes, you do wanna spray your stuff again. So this usually comes in like bigger spray bottles. So obviously this is more than you're gonna need for one person. So my trail family on the AT would take turns buying this every few weeks and we would all like share a bottle and spray all of our stuff so that we weren't having to each buy our own every few weeks and then end up not using it. So if you have this sprayed on your boots, for example, and then a tick crawls up on your boot, it's gonna die immediately. So there goes your issue right there. I would also spray this on things like my backpack, my tent footprint, my sit pad, things like that. It's also helpful to tuck in your clothes to kind of make barriers so that the ticks can't easily get to your skin. So for example, you could tuck your pants into your socks, your shirt into your pants, and things like that. You also wanna stay out of really grassy areas and walk in the middle of the trail if you can, so that if there's any gr grass or plants hanging over, you're not, the, the ticks aren't like hitching a ride on you as you go by. You wanna avoid that as much as possible. 
You can also do a tick check each night, kind of give yourself a wipe down. I like to bring some cleansing cloths along and like give myself a wipe down and a cleanse every night and then I'll check for ticks. And then ticks also, they, they like to stay in places that are like dark and moist and places that it might be hard for you to see the ticks yourself. <laughs> for example, like behind your ears and along your hairline, in your armpits, along your waistband, like maybe in your like groin area. So aside from the groin area, maybe have a buddy that you do a tick check with every night. So when Ibex and I were on the AT, we did a tick check for each other each night and kind of checked along behind the ears and the hairline and like places that you couldn't really see yourself just to make sure like they didn't see any ticks in those areas. If you do find a tick, you wanna remove it with tweezers as soon as possible. Because like I said, Lyme disease, you can get Lyme disease if the tick has been on your skin for between 24 and 36 hours. So the sooner you get it off of you, the better. And I also brought like a little mirror on the AT to help me check those like harder to see areas. <laughs> you can also spray exposed skin with bug spray like DEET, but I don't really like to do that when I'm hiking because I'm doing so much sweating and I just don't like to have that sort of stuff on my skin when I can't regularly shower. So that's totally up to you, but it is another way that you can prevent ticks. It's also a good idea to always use a sit pad instead of sitting directly on the ground or on logs or downed wood because the ticks, you know, can be hanging around on there and they'll have more of a barrier if you're using a sit pad than if you sit directly on the ground. It's also a good idea to wear light colored clothing instead of dark because you can more easily see the ticks. But that's another thing. It's like, oh, when you're hiking the AT, you're getting so dirty and light colored clothing is kind of tough in that way. So just be aware that light colored clothing is better, but obviously it's up to you what you decide to wear. When you do wash your clothes, put them in the dryer on high heat for at least 60 minutes, which will help to kill ticks. And also shower as much as possible. Again, that's easier said than done on the AT when you only get to shower every few days, but showering obviously will help get off any ticks that have not attached to you yet. And then while you're in the shower, make sure you do a tick check and make sure you check the backs of your knees and your belly button as well as those other places I already mentioned. So again, I'm not trying to fear monger. I myself did not get Lyme disease on the trowel, but I do think it's really important that you're aware that this is a threat and that you should be watching out for the signs and symptoms and trying to avoid tick bites as much as you can while you're on the AT. And by the way, my friend head chef got Lyme disease. He was in my trout family while we were on the AT and he lost a lot of weight in the span of a couple weeks. He lost all of his energy. He was such a strong hiker. He hiked over a 50 mile day on the AT just to show you how great of a hiker he was. And once he got Lyme disease, he was maybe wanting to do like nine, 10 miles a day. He was sleeping for like 12 hours plus a night. His face got ashy white. It was just very obvious that something was wrong and he was in total denial about it. He was definitely in denial that he had Lyme disease. And I had a couple of other friends who also got Lyme on the AT and they were also in denial that they had it. So just know that this may be a common thing where people are just in total denial that they've actually gotten Lyme disease. So watch out for the signs and symptoms Watch out for the signs and symptoms on yourself, but also on your friends, because again, the AT is a community and you should all be taking care of each other out there. If you have had any experience, if you've gotten Lyme disease, if you've known someone who got, who's gotten Lyme disease, if you have any other tips on how to prevent it, please drop all of that stuff down in the comments. And again, don't be afraid to go hiking on the East Coast, just be aware. All right, you guys, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel for more hiking, backpacking, AT and Colorado content. I'll be hiking the Colorado trail this summer. So if you're interested in that trail, definitely make sure you subscribe and I will talk to you all next time. See y'all later.